Hey, man, are you ready to record your first ever session in Pro Tools? Well, let me show you something. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you don't know yet, this place is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, now is the time to do so. And I'm going to get off into this video and show you how to configure your settings for your first ever Pro Tools recording session. When you first launch Pro Tools, you'll be confronted with the dashboard. The dashboard is where you choose the parameters for starting your session. You choose stuff like your file type, your sample rate, your bit depth, your IO settings, and where you want to save the session. One of the first things that you want to do is save a session locally. You have the choice to choose a local session. If you're going to be collaborating, you could choose a cloud session, which allows you to actually save your session to the Avid Cloud. To do that, you would need to sign in. This is great if you're going to be collaborating with other people in a different location. Or you could also create a session from a template. Some of the templates are available here, or you can go ahead and download a template from wavywayne.com. For now, let's just go ahead and start by creating a local session, meaning that we're going to save the session onto the computer or onto our own hard drive that we have here. One of the main things that I want y'all to get in your mind is organization. It's going to be super key, especially if you plan on being a professional in this field. And so to start off, we want to make sure we choose an appropriate name for our Pro Tools session. I'm going to name this my first session. OK, now, before we talk about all these parameters, let's just jump down to this bottom section here. And this is actually the location of where we're going to save those sessions. So right now, and I always like to choose this as prompt for location. That means after I configure my session and choose my parameters, Pro Tools will then ask me every time, where do I want to save this session? That's definitely my preference uh, because I work with a lot of different clients and I always am saving the sessions in different places, different drives, different folders. If you know for a fact that you are always gonna save your sessions in one place, you could just choose that location in go ahead and dive through your folders and files and say, hey, this folder is where I'll save all of my Pro Tools sessions going forward. And then as long as that drive is available, Pro Tools will automatically choose that location for you. But I'm just going to hit prompt location so that I am confronted with the screen every time I start a Pro Tools session that asks me, where do I want to save this session? Down at the bottom left, you'll also see there's a little check box on this uh, section that says show on startup. What that is saying is that, hey, this dashboard is optional for us to show it on startup or not. If you uncheck that, then the next time you start Pro Tools, then you'll just be confronted with a blank screen. The dashboard won't be there, but you can always just go up to the file menu and hit create new to get the dashboard back. But I definitely um, recommend that you leave the show on startup checked so that, you know, we're going to need to start up a session every time we load it up. Right. Cool. <laughs> All right. So now. Let's talk about file type. There's only two file types that you can work with in Pro Tools. Those include the BWF WAV format, which is the default for Pro Tools. And you can also choose AIFF. I'm going to always choose WAV. Obviously, you know, the channel, I'm Wavy Wayne. All right. So we're going to uh, choose that. There are no audible sound differences between the two file formats. So there's nothing for you to worry about there. Sample rate is basically how many snapshots per second that your DAW is taking of the incoming analog signal as it's converting it from analog to digital. So as we are recording, I have my sample rate set to 48 kilohertz. That's a great professional sample rate. To learn more, I have a whole in-depth Pro Tools course where I'll teach you all about sample rates, but you got to drop down in the link down in the description to uh, actually sign up for that Pro Tools certification course. Bit depth is going to determine your amplitude resolution. Sample rate is determining your frequency re resolution. OK, so um, as far as bit depth, it's good to start off with 24 bit. That's going to be a great quality of your uh, amplitude resolution for the session we're going to start. We talked last time a little bit about the I.O. settings, but this is a, this stands for input and output. Right. And if you have following this video in a series, then you already have went up to the setup menu and chosen the correct audio interface. Now, when you do that, um, you will go to the IO settings and choose stereo mix. This will default the input and output paths and their labels to match whatever audio interface you've chosen. 
uh, in the playback engine, okay? If you haven't seen that video, I suggest that you pause this video and go to part one of this video series, all right, and check that out first. So now I have all of my par parameters chosen. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. I'm gonna be confronted with this window here that asks me whether I wanna save the session and to name the session, make sure I have it there. So I'm gonna my first session, okay? Here we go. Now, when you first open Pro Tools, there will be one of the Pro Tools main windows open, either the edit window or the mix window. We can cycle between those two by holding the command key and hitting equal, or if you're on a PC, that's gonna be control and equal, all right? Now, the session is blank, there's nothing here. Let's go ahead and get a track in our session so that we can start recording. First thing first, I just wanna go straight up to the track menu and hit new. But as you learn, you will see that Pro Tools has a lot of shortcuts that we could use to help make our workflow a little bit faster. So if I go down to new, you see that shift command in, or if you're on a PC, that's gonna be shift control in. You can use that shortcut to open up the new tracks dialog box. I have my microphone connected to my audio interface, so I'm just gonna need one mono audio track. We even have the ability to name it here. Let's name it Wavy Box. I'm gonna hit create. And now I have my first audio track here in Pro Tools. Let's take a look at a couple of the controls on this audio track, and then we'll go ahead and enable this track for recording and start recording our first file. So starting from the left, right up under the nameplate, we have the tracks record enable button. Hitting this button on the track will get this track enabled for recording to receive input from whatever input it, that it is uh, that is selected, and then we can start recording. Next to that, we have input monitoring, which just allow us to hear whatever's connected to that input. Um, depending on the version of Pro Tools that you have, you may or may not have that option available to you. And then of course we have solo buttons and mute buttons. We have more controls on here that I'll discuss later in later um, videos, or you can sign up for the Pro Tools certification course to learn all about everything that we see here. We got our IO section, our input and outputs. This should already be uh, assigned to match with the audio interface that you've selected before we started this session. So let's just double check it by clicking on the input path and confirming that whatever input on your audio interface that you plugged your mic in is selected here on the input path on this channel. And I plug my mic into mic line one. So I'm gonna select that there. My output path is gonna default to whatever the main monitor paths is that um, are connected to the audio interface. So that's selected. The Pro Tools already has detected those inputs and outputs because I told it what audio interface I was using. So I didn't really have to change anything there. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and record and enable this track. You see that I'm getting a nice signal. If the signal is too hot or too low, there's three ways to adjust your signal in a Pro Tools session. That is by changing the gain on your preamp that's by getting closer or further away from the microphone or increasing or decreasing the source volume. So if I was recording something like a guitar or a keyboard that had a volume control on it, I could turn it up or turn it down. Nothing in the software is gonna change that level, all right? Now that I'm record enabled on this track, we just got one more step here and that's to open up our transport window. In Pro Tools, you just wanna go up to the transport window menu, I'm sorry, go up to the window menu, choose transport. You also see I have my transport controls right here in the toolbar, but I like this little floating window. I'm just gonna hit this record button and then hit the space bar to start recording. Here we are, this is my first ever Pro Tools recording. Yada, 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 yada. All right, child, now go ahead and jump into your Pro Tools session and start making some beautiful recordings. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Remember, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Share this with a friend, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch y'all on the next one.